Hi there, and happy October. It's October 1st, and we're going to talk about this day in history for today, but first I want to say happy birthday to my nephew, Dylan. I'm the oldest of my siblings, and he is the youngest of my youngest siblings, so that makes him young enough to be my grandchild. <laughs> But he's my nephew. So happy birthday, Dylan, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I've got about five pages of single-spaced material of things that happened on October 1st. And that's a lot of material. I like to keep these videos short because I usually prefer to watch short videos. So rather than drag it out for... 30 minutes or an hour. I'm going to pick through and try to be concise and brief here. So let's see. I've got a, a document right up there on the screen that I'm going to look at. We'll, we'll pick through. You can, you can pick through there with me. On this day in 1890, Yosemite National Park was established. On October 1, an act of Congress creates Yosemite National Park, home of such natural wonders as Half Dome and the giant sequoia trees. Environmental trailblazer John Muir and his colleagues campaigned for the Congressional Action, which was signed into law by President Benjamin Harrison and paved the way for generations of hikers, campers, and nature lovers, along with countless Don't Feed the Bears signs. Seriously, don't feed the bears. Oh, in 1903, the first ever World Series game was played on this day. It was the Pittsburgh Pirates playing the Boston Americans at that time. Pittsburgh won the game with uh, a score of 7-3. to three. But in the end, Boston won four games in a row to take the contest five games to three. Because it was an informal and voluntary arrangement between the two clubs, there were no plans to repeat it, so there was no World Series in 1904. But by 1905, the World Series became formally established by both leagues and became an annual and compulsory event. And I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I, I like baseball, if you can't tell. On this date in 1908, the Ford Motor Company unveiled the Model T, in 1918, Lawrence of Arabia captured Damascus. In 1920, Scientific American reports that radio will soon be used to transmit music to the home. In 1924, Jimmy Carter was born. James Earl Carter was born in Plains, Georgia. He preferred to be called Jimmy. He was the son of a peanut farmer and was the first president to be born in a hospital. He was raised a devoted Southern Baptist and graduated from the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland in 1946 and married Rosalind Smith later that year. 1946, Nazi war criminals sentenced at Nuremberg. 1949, Mao Zedong proclaims People's Republic of China. So, if you follow news much, you might be seeing items today mentioning this being the 70th anniversary of Communist China. 1950, Randy Quaid was born in Houston, Texas. He's an actor, if you don't know. 1961, Roger Maris breaks the home run record. He became the first ever Major League Baseball player to hit more than 60 home runs in a single season. The Great Babe Ruth had set that record in 1927, as we mentioned the other day. Maris and his teammate, Mickey Mantle, spent 1961 trying to break it, and after hitting 54 homers, Mantle injured his hip, leaving Maris to close that record by himself. Maris hit his 61st home run against the Boston Red Sox. League champion Yanks won the game 1-0. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty close. <laughs> In 1962, Johnny Carson made his debut as The Tonight Show host. Wow, in 1971, the first computed tomography scan was performed on a patient, also known as a CT scan or a CAT scan for computed axial tomography. Those scans produce images of cross-sections or slices of the human body. It makes it possible for doctors to examine the soft tissues of the body, which are difficult to see with traditional x-rays. 
pretty impressive stuff. Oh, and here's an interesting note about CAT scans. It says, partial credit for the development of the CT scanner is due to the Beatles, according to British radiologist Ben Timmis, because the band's recording label, EMI, heavily funded the research of the CT's invented Sir Godfrey Hounsfield. Because the Beatles sold so many records and made so much money for EMI, Hounsfield was able to devote four years of full-time work to the development of a commercial CT machine, which was called the EMI scanner. 1977, the Department of Energy was established. 1987, they had another big earthquake in California. Every time they have a big one, I think, oh, maybe is this one it? Is this one it? But... They still keep on a rockin'. In 1988, Mikhail Gorbachev became head of the Soviet Union. In 1990, a meteorite exploded above the Pacific Ocean. In 1992, the Cartoon Cable Network premiered. <laughs> In 1993, a 12-year-old girl was kidnapped from a slumber party in, in California, and it, uh, it didn't go well. Anyway, it uh, eventually led to California's three strikes law. This is a long article. I think it's kind of important, but I, I don't really want to go into the details of it. In 2013, a partial shutdown of government agencies occurred after the U.S. House and Senate failed to agree on a spending bill to keep the government operations running. And the last item, with the date of 2015 on it, is kind of happy, for me anyway, International Coffee Day. <laughs> it's an occasion that is used to promote and celebrate coffee as a beverage, with events now occurring in places across the world. The first official coffee date was October 1, 2015, as agreed by the International Coffee Organization and was launched in Milan. So, International Coffee Day. And that's going to wrap it up for us today. Be a short one. This day in history for October 1st. Thanks for watching. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes along with the physical address. If you'd like to support National Coffee Day by sending me a coffee mug. <laughs> Shameless plug. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Isn't this pretty? This image was the banner image on my website for a while. And I, you know, some places will make you up promotional stuff. So I had it put on a coffee cup. Yeah. Adjust that microphone. As always, links to my research are included in the shoe notes. <laughs> oh, boy.